Welcome guys again and this is a video about Ascaris lumbricoid. The common name is roundworm. Now you can see Ascaris lumbricoid almost look like a earthworm but the color is whitish cream. So very important this color is whitish cream. The Ascaris lumbricoid live inside the small intestine majorly in the jejunum and ileum which is the medium and ileum is the last point of our small intestine. So Scaris lumbricoid is our largest nematode very important those who till not watch the video of our introduction to parasitology please watch them after that you can understand the terminology okay. So in this we study about the morphology life cycle pathogenicity or clinical feature laboratory diagnosis treatment and prevention of our Scaris lumbricoid. In case of morphology we have adult form and egg in between we also have a larva form but but the larva form is not as such important in the morphology okay but we should know that there is a larva stage also in Ascaris lumbricoid. In case of adult we have a male worm and a female worm and in case of egg we have a two type of egg unfertilized egg and fertilized egg. One by one we discuss all. So adult worm having a very unique feature the part where it contain a mouth is called anterior part and the part where the adult worm is and called as posterior part. The body is cylindrical body not like a tape like structure okay or we can say not like a flat body. Both the end are pointed and the anterior part having a three lips very very important thing. The nematode having a three lips at anterior part you can see one at upper and two at lower side. Now this is a male adult worm and this is a female adult worm. In case of male they are smaller in size 15 to 30 centimeter and female are larger in size 20 to 40 centimeter. But although you can imagine that our scale which we are using for drawing is 15 centimeter. So when the infection inside the any person so 30 centimeter long long adult worm we can see in the Ascaris lumbricoid. And thickness it means width is 2 to 4 mm in male and 3 to 6 mm in case of female. Now very unique feature will differentiate male adult worm and female adult worm that is male having a curve at posterior end. It means end part of male adult worm having a curve you can see but in the female there is no curve straight posterior end. Now another important thing is you can see the two spikes at the posterior end of male you can easily seen in this picture. So this is called as copulatory spicules and this type of spicules not present in female worm because end part of female is conical but very unique feature in female they contain vulvar waste it means the gravid like structure which is a sex organ for female. Now one female can give 2 lakh eggs per day. In case of egg unfertilized egg and a fertilized egg. Fert unfertilized egg are the egg which are not meet or fused with male sperm that's why it does not contain embryo in it. The size is little bit longer than the fertilized egg which is 80 micron in length and 55 micron in width. Very very important thing. Both the egg are golden brown due to bile stain. And the unfertilized egg having an irregular covering around them which is a albumin coat. Inside the unfertilized egg we have seen the refractile granules and they are very shiny under the microscope. So this unfertilized egg not float in a saturated salt solution. So what do you mean by that? So take example in a tube we have a saturated salt solution. So saturated salt solution is a solution which is fully saturated with the salt. Okay. Now if we add more, solu more salt inside this saturated salt solution the salt cannot dissolve in the water. Okay. So this is a saturated salt solution. If we put our stool sample in it. So the unfertilized egg are heavy than this solution so they set at the bottom while the fertilized egg are the lighter than this solution so they come at the surface we can take into the slide and finally examine under microscope. So this is a type of concentrated floating technique okay. In case of fertilized egg as the name suggests fertilized so they are fertilized or fused with male sperm that's why it also contain embryo inside the egg. The size is 65 in length and 40 micron in width. Already I told you bile stain very very important. Generally asking question as guys lumbricoids egg are whether bile stained or not. 
now coarse albumin coat okay in this we have a thick albumin coat in this we have a irregular albumin coat and the very center you can see and segmented ovum okay and this type of egg float in saturated salt solution due to look at the point so this is a crescentic space okay we can say empty space due to that they are float in saturated salt solution now life cycle is very very important when a patient passes stool, so in the stool we have seen this adult worm, okay, by the neck dies and with the help of microscope, we can also identify the unfertilized and fertilized egg, okay. That's why this is called diagnostic stage because in the stool sample, by the neck dies, we can see the adult worm. By the microscope, we can see the eggs of a scarice lumbricoid, okay. Now, for the development of this fertilized egg, they need a moist soil, okay. That's why when the person or a patient passes to in open area especially in around the farming area so the eggs are get their environment and develop into repetitive form larva okay this is the infective stage to human okay now this repetitive form larva if infect to the fruits vegetable these fruits and vegetable ingested by a human so when they come into the intestine to the mouth by the intestinal juice the outer shell wall is digest okay now we can see the repetitive form larva in the intestine. So this repetitive form larva invade the intestinal cell and reach to the blood circulation finally migrate to the lungs. Now very very important thing please remind when the first time larva come into the intestine then this is called as L1 stage larva. After that when they come to the lungs in this stage this is called larva stage 2 okay from the lungs it goes through trachea trachea is the ring like structure in around our neck due to cuff they come into our mouth okay and re-enter into food pipe finally into the intestine now when they re-enter into the intestine through the food pipe so in this stage they called as a larva stage 3 so very very important in the life cycle of a scarce lambricoid we have a three stage larva when they first time enter into our body they called as a larva stage 1 after that they migrate to lungs larva stage 2 when they re-enter into the intestine then they are called as a larva stage 3 finally when the patient is passing stool so in the stool we can see this and the cycle is going on okay pathogenesis when a patient is infected with the ascaris lambricoid then the infection is called as a ascariasis or roundworm infection in this we see a abdominal pain in a patient or due to heavy burden of the ascaris adult worm they take all the nutrition and in the patient we see the malnutrition okay wandering adults are the very dangerous because they are moving in inside the body here and there and sometimes they get entered into the bile duct and and block the bile duct this condition is caused by the ascariasis because in the bile we have a so many type of digestive enzyme and finally it disturb our digestive system in case larva when the larva move to the lungs i already told in the cycle so they cause a fever or pneumonia now at this time due to they enter into lungs and this condition is called as loffler syndrome in ascaris lambricoid now a larva has a three stage i already described you this okay in the laboratory diagnosis we have a direct detection of parasite in the stool in the stool we can see the adult worm either female and male with our neck dice okay because they are 15 to 30 centimeter long we can also see the adult worm in the sputum but but in very rare cases so when the larvae from the intestine move to the lungs due to any cuff we see the this larva of ascaris lambricoid in sputum so we can also identify at that condition finally and the common thing is demonstration of egg inside the stool sample with the help of microscope I already told you the concentration technique by using saturated salt solution. Another we have an indirect technique. In this we have a serological technique. I already told you when there is an infection our body make antibody against them. So we have to detect that antibody with the help of serological technique. Under this we have a IHA indirect hemagglutination ELISA. In case of blood examination eosinophilia very common thing in every helminthes infection. Okay now imaging okay like x-ray ultrasound so when a patient having a 
very high amount of this sketch lambrucoid in the intestine so we can by x-ray detect them or in the lungs we can also use this type of technique to detect the infection okay treatment we can give albendazole and bendazole in case of prevention very very common law we can say in the parasitology avoid eating of raw vegetable and personal hygiene is very very important especially in children because this ascaris lambricoid mainly cause infection to children remind this ascaris lambricoid mainly cause infection to children okay and thank you